Tonight, some say it's the next heart bleed, a security bug that's hard to fix, a GoPro light camera that takes 360 degree video and glow in the dark streets. Do they really work? Tech News Tonight is next. This is Twit. This is Tech News Tonight, episode 79 for Friday, May 2nd, 2014. I'm Jason Howell. We're going to start right off tonight with another security flaw that some say could be the next heart bleed. Uh, joining me to talk all about this newly discovered bundle of joy is Clint Finley, writer at Wired. Thank you so much for coming to Tech News Tonight, Clint. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. It's great, great, to, be here. great to have you here. So let's uh, start right off with this. This newly discovered security flaw affects two widely used open source login tools that you've probably used at some point to log into Google, Microsoft, Facebook, a bunch of others. It's OAuth and OpenID. Uh, Clint, what exactly is Covert Redirect and what kind of a potential payload does it carry? Well, it, it's actually perhaps not as new as... Uh, as we might think, uh, it's been described before. Uh, LinkedIn uh, actually did a blog post, I think, a month ago, uh, explaining why their developers, uh, third-party developers, needed to uh, make some changes in order to pre prevent it from happening. But uh, what it is is it's it's essentially a new spin on an old idea called phishing, uh, which is when somebody sends you an email purporting to be from your bank, but what it actually is is a link to a fake site that's designed to capture your username and password. And uh, so, oh yeah, Go for this it. is a, what the way this is different is that it uh, actually uses uh, Facebook or Twitter or Google uh, as as sort of a proxy for doing that. Uh, so o OAuth and OpenID are these tools that you can uh, that you can use to uh, log into other services with your account. Um, uh, Flipboard is an example, uh, uh, or if you go to Wired.com and you leave a comment and you go through our message uh, system called Discuss, uh, you can use your Twitter account or your Facebook account to to authenticate there. So what this does is that it it uses one of those as as a um, as a front, and then it it instead of taking you to the the real service, it takes you to uh, a fake site that's you, that's now captured your your username and password. And, or other information. And or other information that could probably be a, a lot potentially of other information depending on what the site's called. Yeah, I'm not yeah, I'm not entirely sure. Yeah. Unfortunately. But. Now uh, Wang Jing, who is the PhD student that discovered the flaw, contacted many of the affected sites, including Facebook. Uh, Facebook actually told Jing that short of forcing every single application on the platform to use a whitelist, a fix couldn't be accomplished in the short term. And other sites, including Google, have expressed that it can't be easily patched. How concerning is it that some of the Internet's heaviest hitters are saying that really there isn't much that they can do about the problem in the near term? You know, I'm not sure. Um, I mean, LinkedIn is already you know, preemptively, or not preemptively, they they fixed the problem already by doing exactly what Facebook, it sounds what, it sounds like what Facebook doesn't want to do. Mm -hmm. uh, the the issue is that it, it could potentially break a lot of third-party apps that don't go and make the, make the changes. Uh, I, to me, it, it seems like it's worth it to, yeah. uh, to secure the apps. Um, I, so I don't, I don't understand what their, their thinking is on that. Um, Beyond, you know, that it's it's been an issue, a potential issue for a while, and it, it hasn't really, as far as I know, surfaced in the wild yet. Mm -hmm. Now, as a user of an affected site, is there any way that the visitor can spot or even prevent this interception of personal data? Any kind of clues, uh, signals, uh, short of simply not using the site, or is that the only option? Uh, well, it, I, you can protect yourself essentially the same way you would from any phishing. Uh, if you get an email from a service provider, instead of following the link in the email, just go directly to the site in your browser. Sure. Uh, and that's and that's a pretty good habit to be in anyway to, mm -hmm. to protect yourself. 
Absolutely. And probably a habit that a lot of us already have, but uh, certainly something that could uh, trip somebody up. Uh, and how would you say this stacks up against the other crazy security flaw of the last month, Heartbleed? Of course, Heartbleed was pretty darn significant, and I feel like we have, you know, Heartbleed syndrome at this point. We're, we're just kind of looking for these security vulnerabilities and maybe overly sensitive to them. For the everyday user, is this as serious as Heartbleed or not so much? Probably not because, like I said, there is a way to protect yourself against it mm -hmm. by... Uh, you know, not following links, uh, web uh, filters, spam filters, try to catch phishing emails already. Uh, but in the case of, of something like Heartbleed, it was a, just this uh, gaping hole in mm -hmm. virtually every major website uh, that you couldn't really protect yourself against uh, until, until the website provider fixed the issue. Sure. Uh, this is an issue where if you know, if you are are careful, you can uh, try to route around it. So I'd I'd say it's it's less significant. And also there, again, there there is a way, there are ways to fix it. Uh, and the the issue is really not with the code uh, on uh, with the OAuth uh, developers code. It's with how uh, Facebook and Google implemented it. Right. Okay. Well, it is disconcerting. It sounds like maybe not uh, nearly as serious as Hartley, but something to consider. Uh, Clint Finley, thank you so much for joining me to talk all about Covert Redirect today. I really appreciate it. Hey, thanks again for having me. Absolutely. Tell people where they can follow your work online. Uh, you can follow me on Twitter, which I think they're showing uh, right there. Uh, and through there, you can find my website and, of course, uh, wired.com. Right on. That's Clintron on Twitter. All right. Thanks again, Clint. Thank you. All right. And now let's get right to the tech feed. And speaking of security, uh, Bloomberg reports that currently across the U.S., defense contractors are mining the Internet for glitches that can be used as the nation's strategic advantage, citing 15 people who work for contractors and the government. The cyber military industrial complex covers a dozen states and employs thousands of civilians, says Bloomberg. And the projects are apparently so sensitive their funding is classified. Chase Cunningham, the National Security Agency's former chief cryptologic technician, tells Bloomberg we're in an arms race and that the competition to find exploitable bugs before an enemy does is as intense as, quote, the space race and the Cold War combined. Ouch. Yahoo will stop honoring do not track requests, requests made by a user's browser and will actively attempt to track your interactions with its site and its content. As an explanation, Yahoo claims it had yet to see a single privacy standard that is, quote, effective, easy to use, and has been adopted by the broader tech industry, end quote, and changed its policy to provide more personalized experiences. Yahoo does allow you to manage certain elements of your privacy via its Yahoo Privacy Center, where users can manually click a button and opt out of what Yahoo calls interest-based advertising. To do that, you must accept cookies into your browser and be logged into Yahoo across all your devices for those privacy settings to work. In a word, oh, although I don't know if that's really a word, but anyways. Acquisition alert, TechCrunch reports that Apple has bought LexView technology, which has been working on low power micro LED base displays for consumer electronics and could be integrated into Apple's hardware for better battery life and screen brightness. If the acquisition goes through, it will be the 24th company Apple acquired over the past 18 months. An Apple spokesperson gave TechCrunch this statement in response, quote, Apple buys smaller technology companies from time to time, and we generally do not discuss our purpose or plans, end quote. Apple's Worldwide Developers Conference is set to kick off June 2nd, but Recode is reporting that CEO Tim Cook will not unveil a wearable device or a next-gen Apple TV at the show, citing sources familiar with Apple's plans. 9to5Mac reports the major announcements at this year's WWDC are going to be OS X 10.10, .10, that's a mouthful, iOS 8, and possibly the rumored Health Book app. And cool Kickstarter alert, a new panoramic action cam called Center can shoot in 360 degrees at once to capture every aspect of a scene. How cool. Rather than simply a first-person view. Center was built by Paul Alyoshin, who previously ran camera engineering at Apple. The unit takes four separate 1080p webcams and stitches them together into a single stream that plays back at up to 60 frames per second. Recorded videos are stored on an 8-gigabyte 
internal flash drive as a standard MPEG video file. And with an interactive player, you can stream videos from your center right to your desktop, smartphone, or tablet in real time. The center is available for pre-order for $299 through its Kickstarter page. If funded, the delivery ETA is February 2015. Reuters is reporting Comcast may soon allow customers using its X1 cable box system to buy games from Electronic Arts through their service, citing five anonymous sources. Popular video games such as FIFA and Madden could easily enter the living rooms of Comcast's more than 22 million customers across the United States. Comcast's X1 Video OS has apps and an interface that also features viewing recommendations and voice control. Sources say Comcast and EA's aim is to make buying games as easy as ordering a pay-per-view movie. And if a deal goes through, create a new distribution model that circumvents consoles and video game uh, streaming device makers. And finally... A few weeks ago, we told you about a pilot project, project to illuminate roadways in the Netherlands. Well, the glow-in-the-dark roads have been pilot testing in the town of Oss since April 10th. And turns out, the radiant lines are sensitive to large amounts of rain and have not been producing a consistent amount of light, according to the BBC. But it's a work in progress. The glow-in-the-dark roads are the only first step uh, in the smart highway system throughout the country, which also includes a dynamic paint that will communicate weather and road conditions to drivers and a lane that will charge electric vehicles as they pass. That's really cool. Uh, baby steps to the Tron grid, everyone. You got to start somewhere. That's it for this edition of Tech News Tonight. You can subscribe to this show by going to twit.tv slash TN2 and write us at TN2 at twit.tv. Don't miss our morning news program, Tech News Today, every weekday at 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern. I'm Jason Howell. Thanks for watching. Bandwidth for Tech News Tonight is brought to you by cashfly.com.